Hello everyone, and I hope you're all fine. Thank you for being here. I hope we can make a good session, a webinar. Uh, let me start with uh, thanking TESOL's association, particularly Ndeya, the chair of EFL Intersection, providing this opportunity for me to run a webinar on Teacher Talk. And I hope this webinar can make you think about Teacher Talk procedure in your classroom. And very sorry for what happened last week. We went through a technical problem and we couldn't run the session in that time, but now we're ready to start. Uh, the topic for today is teacher talk, and I have chosen a kind of subtopic of the stuff of Moses or Achilles' heel, and the reason for that is two aspects of teacher talk. One of them as a big strength of a teacher and the other one as a kind of weakness for teaching we're going to talk today and see if they are really if it is really uh, a kind of strength or a weakness so by teacher talk by teacher talk we mean a way we provide input for learners uh, but before going to the definition of that, it's i think time for me to introduce myself and I am Jawar Kamali, uh, that was the, how it is pronounced in Persian, and uh, I'm a PhD in TEFL from Al Taba University, the lecturer at Farhangian University, British Council teacher trainer, TESOL trainer, ELT author and consultant, and I'm very happy to have the chance to run this session. But let's get the ball rolling. Uh, they are the aims of this webinar, what we are going to do, what we are going to cover in this webinar. The first one, uh, the first aim we have got is to get familiar with theoretical framework and the definition of teacher talk. Then we're going to raise awareness about the importance of teacher talk. Then to know how to have a balanced TTT. By TTT, we mean teacher talking time. And the last one is to get familiar with construction and obstruction techniques mostly done by Walsh and expanded framework by me, 2018. So they are the aims. But what is teacher talk? Um, at the very beginning, I just want you to think about what teacher talk is and how we can provide the definition for it. So just 10 seconds, I want you to think about it. So, what is it? The definition by Richards and Schmidt of teacher talk is that variety of language sometimes used by teachers when they are in the process of teaching. In trying to communicate with learners, teachers often simplify their speech. The word which is very important here is the word of simplification. Uh, but it should be, bear, it sh it should be bear, borne in mind that simplification is different from falsification sometimes this simplification we as teachers we try to simplify our speech in a form of intonation pronunciation other thing sometimes we change the pronunciation of the word and we think that we are simplifying the word but it is not the case by simplification we are we don't mean falsification so simplification happens in um in a form of grammar in a form of discourse, in the form of vocabulary, and these type of things, but not the simplification of pronunciation. There is no simplification of pronunciation in teacher talk. But when we're talking about the rate of speech, yes, by simplification, it means speaking slower, uh, speaking more enunciated. So that's why the word simplification is very important and what we mean by simplification and how we can apply it. Let's get to the next part. Uh, this pie chart is a very important pie chart and it shows the importance of teacher talk in language classes. If you just take a look, uh, there is a percentage there, 66%, and it shows something very important. I don't know if you're familiar with IRF and IRE as 
we can say the classroom um, interaction pattern um, IRF IRE stands for initiation response and evaluation and IRF stands for initiation response and feedback if you just take a look at this type of interaction in language classroom you can see that most of the initiation and evaluation or initiation and feedback these two are by teachers and the response is by the students so i'm not dealing with the time of speaking i'm dealing with the turns of speaking so there are two turns for the teacher and one turn for the student for the learner so you see that 66 percent mostly is for teacher talk and 33 percent is for student talk i i didn't mean that the teacher should speak for 66 percent of the classroom time i'm dealing with the proportions of the tens of the class so i should initiate the class initiate the topic i get the response from my learners and then i evaluate it all providing the feedback but let's see what i mean by them in ire episode by joshua thomas 2012 we can see that the teacher asks uh, so what happens with the owner of the mine who is the owner of the mine who is it well yes and the student says don pedro and the teacher says don pedro exactly so this is one of the episodes of ire in language classroom and you see that in e part the conversation is done and we are not uh, uh, promoting encouraging people uh, and students to speak more Take a look at IRF episode. What's happening here? Chapter 14, it's a teacher. Chapter 14, there is an important moment there. A lot of things happen here, right? For you all, what would be one important thing? This is a response by the student. I think when Angel goes and tries to see his family, the teacher, as a feedback, and why is it important? So this why is it important is that type of feedback that can encourage student participation in the classroom so in irf you're trying to help the learners speak more in our classes again the response by the learner because he wants to visit his father it's an important moment and the last part by the teacher who says yes as an evaluation part so you see that two parts of these types of conversation is but is under two two turns of this conversation should be on teacher's shoulder and one part on a student but this is my art as a teacher to make that part that response uh, long and make them to speak more in our classes and one of those ways is the question of why so this is the importance of teacher talk in, in language classes but uh, the point which is very important for me in this webinar is not teacher talking time of course we are going to deal with it but very shortly but i'm going to work on teacher talking quality or uh, ttq which is very important and we're going to work on it but before that let's just get to the point of teacher talking time a very controversial issue some people believe in the more the better and some people believe in the less the better so which one do you agree with do you think we should have uh, we should speak more in the class speak less in the class which one do you prefer as a teacher as an english teacher um, of course there are advocates of any of these approaches and some people as uh, some uh, methods like audiolingo believes in uh, the more the better because they believe that the teacher is a model of the class and people should follow him spe specifically in pronunciation speaking uh, some approaches some methods like elt they believe in the less the better because they believe that we should have more time for the students for the learners to talk in the class they believe mostly in interaction hypothesis or um, output hypothesis and they believe that if i don't speak if you don't speak 
you cannot learn the language. So that's why uh, this, these types of uh, controversy uh, happened and still continued. But something which is believed nowadays is uh, the key to success. If I want to just talk about the key to success, we just take a look at the next slide. Yes, the answer is balanced TTT. So what do I mean by balanced TTT is, uh, I think you of, we can be familiar with this term, what we mean by balanced TTT means when the TTT is not so too high and is not too low, but what does it mean? It means, this is what Welsh 2002 believed in, where language use and pedagogic purpose coincide, learning opportunities are facilitated. Okay. There are two, uh, we can say phrases, key phrases here, language use and pedagogic purpose. So, what do we mean by language use? By language use means what I say and how I say it. By pedagogic purpose, we mean the educational goals, we mean the skills and the stages. So it means that whenever I want to teach a skill of language, like grammar, like vocabulary, whenever I'm in this different stages of teaching, like engagement, study, activation, the language I should use, and even the proportion of the language I should use, should be different. So to just put into practice this theoretical definition of language use and pedagogic purpose, I want you to take one minute to prioritize these skills and sub-skills of language in terms of teacher talking time. So which of these skills and sub-skills do you think uh, need more time? Which of them need less teacher talking time? For example, to me, I believe that in grammar, because I have to present something new, because I need sometimes to explain, maybe grammar needs more TTT than, for example, I don't know, speaking that they, the learners should talk. But they are my own opinion. There is no experimental study, at least to my knowledge, to compare these skills and sub-skills based on TTT. But I, um, this is something my experience has told me, and talking to different people, different teachers, even, even trainers, I came up with uh, the kind of uh, prioritizing, which I'm going to just show it in the next slide. But right now, I want to ask you, for one minute to just put them from one to six, from the one that needs more TTT, the most TTT, to the one that needs the least TTT. So we have got one minute. Think about them. Which one needs the least, the, the most TTT? Which one the least TTT? So you've got one minute.
Okay. Thank you, Saeed and Parisa. I've seen what you have written, grammar reading, grammar reading vocabulary. Thank you very much. But this is what I believe, of course. Thank you, Muhammad, um, uh, for checking all these things, uh, and thank you. So let's see what my belief is. Uh, the first one is grammar, in my point of view, because we need to explain the things. We are mostly presenting something. That's why in grammar we need more TTT. Then it's the vocabulary, uh, going through the meaning, form, pronunciation, other things. So we need to talk more uh, as the teacher. Then we've got listening. And the listening part, yep. Uh, the parts to um, build the context, then to just asking some questions in post task and lots of other things. Then the reading, again, the same story as listening, they are somehow the same. Uh, then it's writing, because in writing, sometimes we need to talk about the models, we need to work on the, uh, what we can say, um, teaching vocabulary and lots of other things. And the last one is the speaking because the speaking mostly is on a student's shoulder. The learners are supposed to talk. And my job, my role as a teacher, that is more, more of a monitor than anything else because I want to provide the direct feedback in the speaking part. So that's why you see that we need different teacher talking time in different stages and different skills and sub-skills of the language. But yeah, nowadays we agree that we should reduce TTT. But why should we reduce TTT? This is the question we're going to work on right now. There are four pictures, as you can see in the slides. Um, they are talking about, they are showing the reasons of uh, reducing the TTT. I want you to just take a look at these four pictures and try to guess. Uh, what they mean and how they are related to redu reduction of TTT in language classroom, the reasons of reduction of TTT in language classroom. So take a look and just guess what they mean. Thank you, Parisa. Yes, sure is one of them. Yes, yes. Agree with you, nice opinion, nice opinion. But, okay. So let's look at the first picture. And the reason why is sometimes by talking a lot, we just prevent them from discovery learning. As you know, guided discovery is a term which is very important and very much worked on these days in, the, in new approaches and methods of language teaching. So um, sometimes by talking a lot, we are giving them everything. We are spoon feeding them. And this is exactly opposite of what you should do in, in real classroom. We are supposed to encourage promote discovery learning for the for the learners. But don't forget that discovery learning has one important adjective, and that is guided discovery. It is called guided discovery. We shouldn't leave them alone and make them discover, because sometimes they discover something wrong. You have to be with them, help them, guide them, and make them discover something they should discover. Of course, the discovery somehow is different from what I expect, but that's okay. This is the nature of discovery. So by talking a lot, we give them everything so they cannot discover. The next one is lowering STT. When I talk more in the class, I don't let them talk. So I said, based on output hypothesis, if they don't talk, they cannot find their, they cannot notice the gap. So noticing the gap is one thing we can do by talking, 
but not us as teachers, learners. When they talk, they can notice their gaps, and in this way, they can learn. So that's why by, uh, by high TTT, we are lowering the chance of talking for them, and we are lowering the chance of finding their gaps. Next one is lowering speaking opportunities. So when I don't have time to speak, uh, I don't take the courage for the next time to speak. When I'm interrupted by my teacher all the time when I want to speak, I don't want to take this time. You see that he's clicking on respond or she's clicking on the respond. I want to talk, please let me talk. But some teachers, they are just in, in constructive techniques, construction techniques of teacher talk, we're going to discuss them. We sometimes we take the turn from the learners. We rub that we grab the turn all the time and we don't let them. And because we are we don't let them talk, we don't let them talk. But because we are the authority of the classroom all the time, the right is with us, and that's why they cannot take, take the turn to speak. I, I always have the turn, I always have the authority, I always have the power, and in this way, I'm discouraging that person to participate in language classes discussion. And the last one, I, I think this is the clearest one, which is creating boredom. Uh, I think this is the worst thing. Um, we don't want to just sit there and listen to people talking. We just want to involve. Benjamin Franklin says, uh, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. So if we want to make the learners learn, we have to provide this opportunity for them to be involved in the process of learning. So. So far, so good. Uh, the next slide we're going to talk about is the howness of TTT reduction. So you see that there are five ways of reducing TTT. However, there are lots of other ways that I'm sure you know, you're aware of, but we're going to focus on these five today. And you can just share with me after this presentation the other ways you can think uh, think about reducing TTT. So the first one is using elicitation rather than explanation. In the past, uh, the way of teaching was something uh, Scrivener mentioned in his book uh, about jog and mock way of learning. In jog and mock teacher is the is a jog of knowledge and pours the knowledge into the mug of students and this is called uh jog and mock way of learning but in and the teacher always explains but in elicitation part we are getting everything from the learners we are not supposed to spoon feed them they're supposed to use their schemata, their back, you know, background knowledge, just to, uh, I can say, to use their knowledge for their knowledge. It means they are going to learn from themselves. They are, we are going to use their schemata to learn new things. So this is what we mean by using elicitation rather than explanation. The second part is the use of body language, mime, gestures, and facial expressions rather than words. You know that. Uh, actions, sometimes gestures, are louder than words. What my body language can do, never my tongue can do. So it's very important to use your gestures and body language and even facial expression. And in this way, you can just make them understand what you say, especially in elementary levels and PI levels. In this way, you can reduce your TTT by just showing, uh, instead of saying stand up, by showing that, by just listening, just um, pointing at your ears, you can just make them understand that you're talking about listening and other things. So it is very easy using your body language. Body language sometimes is universal, so everybody can understand, even in mixed, uh, in multicultural classes, 
they can just use your body language and they can understand it. The third uh, way is getting students to give feedback on task to each other rather than to the teacher. So the peer feedback, student feedback is the one which is very much recommended. In this way, you can reduce your TTT because they are providing feedback for each other. Next one is eliminating unnecessary TTT. Uh, it means grading language, which is very important. But be careful, not oversimplification because oversimplification can lead to unnatural models from the teacher. As I talked about pronunciation at first, sometimes because we want to make pronunciation easier, we just change it uh, to kind of, we can say L1 pronunciation than the natural pronunciation. So we have to be very careful, not oversimplification. I just call it um, falsification. And the last one is tolerating the silence. Very important thing. We as teachers and even trainers, we are afraid of silence in most cases. Whenever they're doing silent reading or they're listening to something, we think that they are they're getting bored, think that they don't like our classes. But believe me, they really need sometimes to think about what they have studied and what they are going to study. That mental processes need time. You should give them time. The wait time we give to the learners is very important. I'm going to talk about wait time a bit later today. And that's very important to make them uh, sometimes for themselves doing nothing thing really just do that mental processes for digesting and a very important term internalizing what they have learned you know whatever we are teaching them is in the form of inputs inputs by itself is not good but when it comes it, it changes to intake means something they can internalize we can be sure that the learning is happening in our classes so more than teaching, we have to think about the learning of the students. That's it. Okay, so up to here, we have talked about the TTT and uh, why we should reduce it and how we can reduce it. But let's just look at the other side. And that is the, they are the positive uses of teacher talk. Of course, um, Teacher talk can be positive. Teacher talk can be helpful. Teacher talk, which has good quality, can make learning happen, can provide learning opportunities, and can help people learn easier and better. So let's start with these usages, these good usages of teacher talk. The first one uh, is personalized presentations. So what do we mean by personalized presentations? Uh, something I did at the beginning of the webinar, I started by introducing myself. This personalized present, when, I'm talk, when I talk about myself, when I'm introducing myself to people, when I bring some personal stories to the class, they can feel connected. So that feeling of empathy and sometimes sympathy is very important. I have got a sentence and I do believe in it. I believe if we want to win students' mind, we have to win students' heart. So if you want, if you want to win students' mind, we have to win their, their heart. It is very important. If we have them emotionally with ourselves. If we have them emotionally with the whole heart with ourselves, it means that we are successful teachers. But if we don't have their heart, we cannot get their mind. So personalized presentations can help us be emotionally engaged with them. And that is the most important part of it. Next one is questioning. 
Fisher, 2005, has got a very nice sentence. It says, uh, questioning lies at the heart of teaching. So without questioning techniques, teachers cannot teach. Why? Because as I told you, elicitation is one of the techniques we have to use. Elicitation is in the form of questions mostly. Because as I said before, guided discovery is a very helpful tool for the teachers and is a thing which is used nowadays in language classrooms. So how can I, how can I encourage them to discover by asking questions? So questioning is at the heart of teaching. Number three is natural conversation. Sometimes teachers are providing correct models for the learners. And that is why teacher talk is important. If I can provide the correct model of the language for the learners, they can learn the language easier. They can learn, learn the language, you can say, more accurately. So that's why we need to teach them to have the natural conversation to speak in the class. So sometimes pe some teachers do not even say a word in the class. This is not something we are uh, recommending, we're suggesting, because they need to hear the language of the teacher and they need to see it, a kind of a type of natural conversation in the class. So this is needed. Number four is about anecdotes. Anecdotes are sometimes a form of personal stories. So in personalized presentations, you talk about yourself. In anecdotes, you're talking, you're telling people your stories and people love it. Storytelling and story narrating are something very important. In anecdote, we are dealing with the story narrating, but in the last one, we're dealing with the storytelling. Uh, people say that in storytelling, you're going to just take the characters and change your voice and other things so people uh, can have a better empathy with the storytelling than story narrating. So this is the one you can uh, work on. So these five are the most important positive uses of teacher talk. So you see that we need teacher talk and the key to success is not anything else but balanced TTT. But it is time to get to the most important part of the webinar, um, which is the features of teacher talk and the construction and obstruction techniques. They are the main features of teacher talk uh, proposed by Chadron 90, 1988. He believes in rate of speech, pauses, prosodic features, modification, vocabulary, and syntax, and discourse. But the rate of speech, surely the teacher talk, which is a type of, it's called a type of foreigner talk or motherese, uh, has got the lower rate of speech. And people mostly, teachers mostly, speak at the uh, lower speed. Uh, word per minute, WPM, mostly for the teachers, uh, is a bit lower than the natural speech. The next one is about pauses. The pauses of teacher talk is mostly more and longer. This is another feature. The next one are prosodic features like phonology, intonation, articulation. Most of the teachers articulate um, precisely, more clearly, because they want to make it clear for the learners. Uh, the intonation sometimes is false because they put more emphasis on uh, the stress part, for example, for avoiding showing the stress and interesting, just put the focus on the first part and say interesting, but nobody really uh, speaks like that. Um, however, the teachers, because they want to teach something, um, they have some, we can say, exaggerated stress pattern and other things, and the stress and other things. The modifications is very important, happen level, level adaptation is very important and uh, for the level adaptation we need uh, modifications in vocabulary, syntax and even discourse. The discourse is very important because with vocabulary and grammar you're familiar with, for example, instead of uh, using the word assignment, maybe work, homework is, a, is an easy word, 
we can use the grammar mostly we avoid using some difficult uh, or more complicated more sophisticated uh, grammatical points like instead of uh, past perfect we use past simple in, in order uh, but the discourse is related to the topics and themes mostly and modification in them um, mostly is done by the books even if you just take a look at course books you cannot find the course book is start with for example talking about art uh, an, an abstract idea mostly they start with greetings the thing that are the discourse is easier to understand so not only the vocabulary and syntax should be considered and should be modified uh, but also the discourse and the topic and themes should be modified but this is the part I'm going to uh, spend a bit more time on it um, the parts which can help us as teachers uh, to be better speakers of the class to be better you can say teachers by using and knowing these techniques and uh, using them in the class so the very first thing I'm going to talk about is about construction techniques Welsh 2002 talked about and there are lots of people after that try to expand this uh, framework I'm one of those and I'm going to talk about what I have found uh, but they are really important things uh, let's start with the first one the first construction techniques of teacher talk something we can do without talk in the class as teacher is the direct corrective feedback he believes well I mean uh, he believes that we can provide uh, corrective feedback directly for the learners it is very much in line with what Swan Michael Swan believes in he believes that learning learners are coming to English classes because they want to learn the language so providing the corrective feedback for them they think that they are learning something especially for adults this is a very useful activity so um, providing direct corrective feedback means a person says I go to school yesterday and just change it to I went to school yesterday this is a way which is really helpful and it's a kind of positive one it's a kind of constructive technique of teacher talk the next one um, is content feedback to me content feedback uh, is the most critical one uh, learners based on what Carl Rogers believe we are a whole person we are first emotions and then cognition and we have to uh, solve the emotional problems then go to the cognitive problems um, I observed the class and it was in a Scrivener's book it was really nice for me uh, there was a class Ali was sitting in the corner I was observing the class the teacher asked Ali why you were absent for three sessions Ali and Ali said uh, my father is died if I'm not mistaken the sentence was this and the teacher said no use past simple it means my father died or was dead or whatever and uh, I was completely confused that his father is dead no matter what if he uses uh, I don't know uh, present past or whatever the important thing is that the content the message of that sentence is more important than form of it so at first I have to provide some kind of feedback on the content say sorry to hear that or sorry for your loss or something like this and then if you want to teach grammar this is not the part so at first you have to win their heart again I want to come back to my sentence uh, sorry uh, about at first thinking about the content the message and then the form so that's why 
I believe that, again, it's very important to provide the feedback on the content than uh, the form. Uh, I just want to uh, have a sentence to bring a sentence from Aristotle. It says he believes educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. So we have to pay attention to the heart of people, to the message they are saying, and then to the form of that. Next one is pushing learners by requesting confirmation or clarification. Um, my job as a teacher is pushing them to speak more. This is called pushed output. Sometime uh, mentioned by uh, Long, Michael Long, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we have to make them speak more. We have to make them uh, take the opportunity of a sp to speak. We have to push them towards providing output for us because in this way you have got enough data to analyze and say um, if that person is progressing or not. So pushing learners by requesting confirmation and clarification is one of those ways. When they say, um, for example, something happened, uh, by just asking the word why, you can make them talk more. Don't forget this magical three-letter word, which is why. By asking that question, you can make them talk more in the class. You can make them think more in the class. You can make them critical thinkers. And this is the ultimate goal of education. Next one is the extent, extended wait time. Uh, based on the experimental studies on wait time, uh, the best time for waiting for the answer is between three to five seconds. No more, no less. Uh, more than three, more than five seconds, it means that they don't have, they don't provide you with answers. They don't have anything to say. But less than three seconds, they do not, they didn't, they didn't have time to think about what they want to say, especially in lower levels. Um, they need to translate the English to Persian. I mean, Persian L1, because my, my L1 is Persian. Then they need to change it to L2 again, and again, say it. So it, it takes time. So three seconds at least needed. So by extending the wait time, you can give them more time to think and say what they want to say. And the last one is a scaffolding. Um, comes from the ideas by Vygotsky, um, sociocultural theory, learning happening in society, and scaffolding means helping them talk by giving them some hints, giving them some vocabulary they need, giving them, giving them some grammatical points they need, and this way they can talk more in the class. So they are the construction techniques of teacher talk. But what about obstruction techniques? Uh, Three obstruction techniques were articulated by Welch, 2002, in his groundbreaking article about, and they are latching, echoing, and interrupting. What does latching mean? As I mentioned there, latching means completing a student term for them. You know, there is a term for the students in the class to talk, but for example, the teacher asks, where did you go yesterday? And the teacher, the student says, uh, I went to the, uh, and the teacher says, oh, you went to the park. That's nice. Parks are really beautiful places. And it's good to go there on, on the weekend. Um, and this is, this is what I mean by completing the student turn. They don't let them complete their turn. They take the turn and complete it for them. Next one is echoing. Of course, in echoing, we have got two types of echoing, student-teacher and teacher-teacher echoing. Um, the one that we're talking about is student-teacher echoing. It means that um, the teacher says, okay, which countries have you been to? And one of them says Brazil. Oh, Brazil. Next one says, 
uh, uh, Iran. Oh, Iran. Next one says the United Kingdom. Oh, the United Kingdom. So repeating whatever they say is what, I, what we mean by student teacher echoing. But what is teacher teacher echo? Uh, which is, uh, I just instruct people, but I try to repeat myself, for example. Say, for example, I say, you are going to persuade each other on your choice. And they don't understand. And again, I repeat myself. You're going to, re uh, you're going to uh, persuade each other on your choice. And again, they don't understand. And I don't change it and I don't simplify it. And I do paraphrase it. I just repeat myself. This is the worst case of echoing that can happen in the class. So both of them are supposed to be avoided. But the worst case is teacher, teacher, echo. And the last one is interrupting. What do we mean by interrupting? Uh, the time that the students are talking and we don't let them talk. It means that we don't turn, they, we don't take their turn, but we interrupt them and we go to other students. We don't wait for them enough to finish their talk. Sometimes teachers do it because they don't want to make people ashamed, the learners. But by interrupting them, you're just killing their courage to speak more in the classes. So they are the construction of construction techniques by Walsh. But the one I'm going to talk about right now is the expanded framework by myself, 2018. Uh, in an experimental study, I could, uh, 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 um, an experimental study of around 50 hours of classroom transcription, we came up with this expanded construction techniques. First one is instruction checking questions. The talk of the teacher, which is very much helpful for providing a learning opportunity for the learners. The first is instruction checking questions. The second one are con concept checking questions. Um, as you know, in instruction checking question, you ask about your instruction. In concept checking questions, you are asking some questions about whatever you have taught. Next one is politeness. By politeness, I mean asking some, especially in higher levels, they really like the teachers who use this kind of feature when they speak. Instead of asking direct questions, they ask, would you mind, would you please, and these types of things. They really like it. Next one is reactive teaching. Most of the teachers, most of the uh, successful teachers, they use this type of teaching. It means if the, the question is asked, they, they, they try to provide an answer to the question. Proactive teaching is the one that you have a lesson plan for, session plan for. But in reactive teaching, uh, Harmer believes, uh, calls it uh, magic moments of the class, the time that they ask you a question which is not related to something you're teaching. And sometimes these magic moments can make a teacher a popular one or not. Um, reactive teaching means teaching those things, but sometimes it is done on the spot because you think it is a question of most of the students. Sometimes it is done delayed because you think that this is the question for that person. But the point is that in reactive teaching, you don't ignore the questions. Then is the storytelling. Then is the storytelling. Uh, the teachers uh, who uses this kind of technique and tell the learners the stories of themselves, especially personalized ones, are mostly uh, popular with the, with the learners. And using simplified language, as we've talked about before, the simplification is a key to success. Enunciation, the teachers who can pronounce the word clearly, who can make the voice, uh, wh whose voice are clear, are clear for the uh, uh, learners, can really, really uh, be good teachers and popular teachers because uh, students like them because they can understand what they say. Addressing all the students, uh, that's being fair to the students 
is very important. It comes from Paolo Freire's opinion about democracy in language classroom and people who praise generously, the teacher who praise generously are teachers who are loved by the students. And it's one of the very positive construction techniques, praising people generously. Please um, do not be um, stingy in using your praise. It can make a miracle for the learners. Praise them, please, more than criticizing. And they are the obstruction techniques. Uh, the first one is hesitated instruction, the one I have seen in some classes, and it makes the students confused with what they should do, and they really don't want to listen to teacher anymore because they think that the teacher doesn't know what they should do, and this makes a problem double. And next one is teachers' long turns. They speak a lot in the class. They just um, they have a lot of deviations and. Instead of just asking the questions to make for, for the learners to speak, they just try to speak more. Um, I really like this one, ditching the students' questions. I've seen a lot of teachers, when they don't know the answer or they think it's not a good time for answer, they just ditch the question, they don't answer them. Uh, next one is denying the mistakes. They make mistakes because for non-native teachers, it happens that they have they, they make mistake in they make some mistakes in pronunciation, grammar, whatever, uh, but they, they sometimes they don't accept it that they made a mistake. And this is the one which is uh, not liked by the learners. Raising voice. Uh, well, mostly I have seen that sometimes the teachers, because they want to just uh, um, show themselves as authoritative people, um, they use, they raise their voice, but mostly it doesn't work. But um, I have read, I have read somewhere, which if you want to um, make ourselves authoritative, we have to make the pauses between our sentences longer. We shouldn't raise our voice. So this is raising the voice cannot help. Unmodified language, as we have talked about before. Falsifying, I started very beginning with that. And L1 overuse. Don't forget the word overuse. I, I don't have any problem with the use of L1 in the class. Sometimes it's helpful. But L1 overuse is not the one I'm in favor of. So um, we're somehow done for the webinar of today. Uh, they are the aims of this session. Let's just see what we have talked about today. Take a look for 30 seconds, then we're going to have a review and a kind of wrap up. Okay, that's good. So we got familiar with theoretical framework and the definition of teacher talk. Then we raised, uh, we, uh, uh, tried to raise awareness about the importance of teacher talk. To know how to have a balanced CTT and to get familiar with the construction obstruction techniques. I am done. If you have any question, you can just leave it to Araceli, if I'm not mistaken, uh, pronouncing the name then I'm going to answer. So we have got around 10 minutes for your questions. If you just, you can just put it there. I'm going to answer them. Could you please just mute your mute and then uh, write your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Araceli, if I'm not mistaken in pronouncing your name.
Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you very much. So, uh, Araceli, am I supposed to answer the questions right now, or you are going to just take them and ask me? Okay, so I try to answer them right now. Thank you for your nice comments. Uh, so you ask about uh, if they don't have any 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 say anything to say. Uh, if they ask, if they say I don't have any reason. So uh, this is a good one. I, I, at first, I think we should have the culture in our classes. If you just uh, have the culture of in monkey management part. I have talked about these things. I think it it, it needs a culture. If they know that if they say something, they won't be humiliated, not by me as a teacher, not by the other people. They will talk. They will say the things. Scaffolding means this. If they don't have, you just tell them why you don't have anything. Say I don't have any reason. So you provide one reason for them and you make them think about the other reasons. Scaffolding is the key to success. You have to give them some ideas. You have to give them some prompts for them to say things. Hesitated instruction means when I want to just give them do something, a task of the book, for example, but I don't know how to do that because I haven't prepared myself for that and I hesitate. For example, I say, okay, in groups of two, uh, I said, sorry, in groups of three, no, no, sorry, in pairs, no, no, in groups of four, it means hesitated instruction. Reactive teaching means uh, when they ask you a question which is not related to the concept you're teaching, it's off target, it's not a target of your session. And in this way, you decide not to answer them. But reactive teaching means you decide to answer them, but not on, sometimes on the spot, sometimes at the end of the class, sometimes to that person, sometimes to the group of people in the class, the students, sometimes to all of them. Yeah, I agree with the why. Uh, you, you are very right, Bezad. Um, uh, sometimes the why question is very difficult for elementary or PI students to answer the questions. Yes, I know that, but that culture is very important. We have to ha make a culture for them because when I ask why, if they think that I'm there to help them, they have the courage to speak. But if they think that I'm there to humiliate them, if the other people are going to laugh at them because of the mistakes they make, they won't speak. So again, I just come back to the word culture. Try to have a culture of a speaking in our classes. Uh, you know, instead of why question, you can ask those CCQs. You know, the CCQs are related to the very heart of the thing you are teaching, so that's why those questions, in the form of yes/no questions, and even either or questions, can make them speak more. But the thing is that after asking why, you need to think. You need to give them wait time. The wait time again is another key to success because if you give them time for their mental process, even one minute, you have one minute to think about the whyness of that. And then they can talk. In that one minute, they can ask you the questions they uh, they have got in their mind about the vocabulary, about the grammar, and other things. And then, by your help, you, they can talk. Yeah, direct feedback is helpful, but surely it is not always on the spot. You know, we are giving you the best ideas, the ideal situation, but I'm a post-methodist and I believe that the teacher 
of the class is the best resource for deciding on what he should do in his own class. So it depends on situation, really. About the equation, I talked about two types of equoing, and I believe that echoing uh, is a natural phenomenon in language. Uh, in, in language. So it cannot be avoided all the time, but if we just reduce it, we can um, increase the aesthetic in the class. The ICQs mostly, uh, if you think that uh, they are not done well or they are not well, we are not well prepared for ICQ, sometimes they become foolish. So if you, if you think that the ICQs you're asking um, are not that much appropriate, you can just skip them. For the beginning levels, I said one of the best ways is gestures and uh, we can say avoiding uh, avoiding what we call it, echoing and using the gesture and body language. Yeah, I do agree with Andrea that fostering a safe environment is paramount. Yeah, I do agree with that, the environment of trust. Uh, not necessarily, Parista, not necessarily answering all the questions. I said, sometimes we need to decide to answer in that time to just leave it to the end of the class, but they should feel the, their importance in our class. The use of first language is recommended, is not bad in the class. The uh, first language is not the enemy of second language. It can help the process of learning, but the overuse is sometimes something we shouldn't do because sometimes if I say a word in first language, you just give them the permission to speak in the first language because it's so much easier for them to speak in that first language. And this leads to not learning the second language. So thank you very much, everyone, for helping me, for being here in this webinar. I hope I can help you a bit about the problems of teacher in your classes. And I'm very much happy, and I, I really want to thank Andrea, Araceli, and Nancy for helping me having this opportunity. Thank you very much. Have fun. You can just uh, write some emails to me, or even in social media, I will be at your service. I will be very happy to answer your questions regarding teacher talking. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you very much, uh, Jabber, for present for uh, leading this presentation and for sharing your expertise with all of us. Uh, thank you, Nancy, for facilitating the session today. And I would like to thank you all for attending this session. It was great. And we really appreciate you being here and sharing your knowledge and uh, thoughtfulness with us. Thank you very much, Jabber.